the Egyptians. They were sending their princes to school to learn from the Egyptians. They were going and, you know, they're walking like an Egyptian, talking like an Egyptian. <laughs> so we have um, the situation now, though, where they are going to be the powerful party. And boy, that recording thing is just circling, circling, circling. I'm not sure. There we go. Finally. Yeah, so basically the Kushites, they see themselves as Egyptian at this time. They're acting just like them because they had hundreds of years where the Egyptians were their bosses, their rulers, and made them do it. They, you know. But Egypt is not in good shape right now. If we remember, at the end of our new kingdom, they had invasion of after invasion. We had the Sea Peoples. We had the Libyans. We had the Bedouins. We have all of these groups coming in and fighting Egypt. And at the same time that Egypt is going and being invaded, we have all of these people saying that they should be the next pharaoh. So Sapria is leading an army and having a civil war. And Mariah is leading an army and having a civil war. And Avery is having an army and having a civil war. And Nicholas is. And everyone's fighting and killing each other. And Egypt is becoming weaker and weaker. So I always liken this to many of um, the students in here that are athletes. They might know something called running a suicide. Which is suicide. Basically, you have two lines. And you run from one to the other. But then guess what? There's another line even further out. So now you go run from the first line to that line. Then you run back. And then there's another line even further. So then you run and then you run back, and then a further line, and you do that, and it is an extremely exhausting exercise. Now, it is great for building endurance. Um, it's great if your coach wants to punish you for being naughty or something like that, but it, how do you guys feel after running suicides? How do you feel, Carson? I feel like I just want to fall over and fall into the Pacific Ocean because it's always super cold there. <laughs> yeah, you're tired. You want to fall over weak, all those things. I love it. Yeah. And so, yeah, exhausted. That's a great word for it. And so Egypt is exhausted. And this is the time when King Paya of Kush looks north and he says, it is time to invade. So the armies of Kush, yeah, it's a common basketball, like, coach kind of thing you have them do it's good for endurance but it's tiring so kush moves north they go attack egypt and they are able to easily take it over now it's the big moment king paya of kush has gone and conquered egypt for hundreds of years egypt has mistreated and abused kush they made them act just like them but shockingly, King Pius says, I am Pharaoh of Egypt. Now think about this. This is big. He could have said, I am king of Cush and you are my subjects. But no, he says, I am Pharaoh of Egypt. So what he does is he goes and doesn't have this be a continuation of Cush's monarchy. This has it a continuation of the dynasties of Egypt. He starts the 25th ruling dynasty of Egypt. Because they saw themselves as being Egyptian. They didn't see themselves as being different. They were in some ways, but to them, they were Egypt. And now, if you don't know what a dynasty is, just a reminder, this is when you have a line of rulers from one family. So, for example, if we have, you know, King Caleb, you know, his dad, of course, was king before him. And then Caleb's son will be the next king and then his grandson and great grandson. So on. that's a ruling dynasty. There were 33, 31 or 33 dynasties of Egypt. Cleopatra's was the last. And so this is, you know, in Egyptian history, it counts. Now, these pharaohs were called the black pharaohs. Um, and the answer for as to why is simple. Um, Egyptians typically are Arabic. Um, so we've talked about how Egypt is kind of isolated from the West, rest of Africa. And so typically the people in Egypt are Arab, whereas the people of Kush, they are Africans, they are black. And so they're the black pharaohs. Um, so there's nothing more to it than that. Um, so we have Kush going and ruling in Egypt and they say, uh, yeah. Actually, I think technically her son was, but like he was like a kid and a Roman puppet and then was killed. Um, I can't remember, though. So it might have been her son was Caesar that was the technical last pharaoh, but Cleopatra is really the end of it. 
Um, the people of Cush say, you know what? We are going to make Egypt as glorious as it's ever been. Now, New Kingdom Egypt was very powerful. It had a ton of territory, a ton of trade, a ton of wealth and power. But even New Kingdom Egypt wasn't building things like the Great Pyramids. And the Kushites wanted to bring that back. So they wanted to go make Egypt as awesome as it had ever been, just like it had been for the last 2,000 years. So, excuse me, sorry. Like I said, sleepy from watching election stuff. They build new temples. They build more pyramids. And they do this in the territory of Egypt and in the territory of Kush. And we see some examples of these new pyramids down here. They're not as big as Egyptian pyramids. They are more um, steep. And they have these temples added on to the front of them. So it's different. It's it's not just a carbon copy of what once was, but we still see that, um, you know, they're trying to go bring back the old Egypt. Uh, I'm never going to ask you about this, but Jabal Barkal is going to be a famous temple. They're going to do, and is going to copy Ramses II, Ramses the Great um, temple in style. And um, we'll see a picture of it a little bit later with the ruins are. But the, the people of Kush, they rule Egypt, they conquer it, but the Assyrians are going to want to rule Egypt as well. Now, in our song, I do a slight inaccuracy to give you information about Kush, although it doesn't technically happen in the narrative. I talk about how Kush sails north with iron weapons to conquer Egypt. Uh, if you read your comic, you should remember that, no, they were bronze weapons. But we're going to learn that iron is going to become incredibly critical to the people of Kush. So I use the term iron weapons to, so you to remember that iron goes with Kush. Um, and, but at this time, they only have bronze. The Assyrians are the ones that are going to have iron first. So the Kushites try to fight back the Assyrians, but there's no match. The Assyrians with their chariots and their iron weapons easily defeat the people of Kush. But the Assyrians only wanted the Egyptian territory. So Kush retreats back past those cataracts of the Nile and are relatively protected against the Assyrians. And the Assyrians don't have the desire to conquer Kush. They just wanted the greatness of Egypt, the Nile River Delta, you know, that land of Goshen where it's so fertile that it could grow so much food. So we see this is going to be um, the end of Egyptian rule in Kush. And we're going to see how Kush is going to change now that they're cut off from the Egyptians. Um, in the future. Here we just see some art of some of those Egyptian princes who are all fighting to become the next pharaoh, bowing down to King Pai. Here we see some of the ruins of the temple. Well, there's not a lot left of it, but it was supposed to be pretty cool and like built, you know, within a cliff. I mean, that's pretty, pretty awesome. All right, and that is our notes for the day. So I am going to stop recording. Do we have any questions on what we've discussed today?